You see a couple of guys want to make a little video appearance. Brickley and Rexy say hello. And they want to say hi to uh, Miss Alexandra Trinechka. Hello. Hello, Alexandra. Hello, Bunky. There's my little... There's our little shout-out to the, uh, you, Alexandra. And... Put them down like this. And we go to the 1959 baseball season. And here is what happened. February 7th. Nap Lajoie. The great Cleveland star of the late early 20th century passes away at 84. Passes away at 84 of pneumonia. April 11th, LA's Don Drysdale hits a home run. He is the only pitcher to hit more than one opening day home run. But the Cubs beat the Dodgers 8 to 1. April 22nd at Municipal Stadium in Kansas City. Chicago beats Kansas City 20 to 6. You know, the White Sox beat the Hayes. 11 of those runs came in a 7th inning in which only one hit was collected. Wow. A lot of walks. A lot of something. May 20th, Detroit beats the Yankees 13 to 6 at Yankee Stadium, putting the Yankees in the cellar in last place for the first time since May 23rd, 1940. Wow, almost 20 years? Whew. Yeah, that's how much of a juggernaut the Yankees were. Let's see, let's see how many oh, oh, World Series did they actually win? 41, 47, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 55, 57. I think that's 9. I think that was 9. Well, I think that was 9. Yeah, they were pretty. Yeah, that was a juggernaut in three quarters. May 26, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh's Harvey Haddock takes a perfect game into the 13th inning. Yeah, he retired 36 consecutive batters. And he ends up losing it. Let's see the... Yeah, he ends up losing it. When Felix Mantilla reaches on a Don Hawk error. Don Hawk, H-O-A-K, H-A-O-K, H-O-A-K. Yeah, it's H-O-A-K. Hawk. And Haddock sent the Blues in the game one to nothing. Was well, it initially a three run home run? Ended up being a one one run hit due to a stupid base running error on somebody. Anyways, June twelfth, the Japanese Hall of Fame opens in Tokyo. June twenty first. Hank Garen hits a three-run home run at Seal Stadium in San Francisco in a Milwaukee 13-3 win. What's remarkable about this, out of the 755 home runs he hit, this was his only three-homer game. Figure that out if you will. It's remarkable. Ah, yeah, let's see. July 7th. The first of two All-Star games happen in Pittsburgh. The National League beats the American League 5-4. On August 3rd, the second All-Star game in, happens in L.A. I don't know why they had two All-Star games for, but... The American League ended up winning 5-3 in this one. September 29th, L.A. beats Milwaukee in the best-of-three playoff. Yeah, that was their second win. That clinch the National League pennant. They had won Game One, three to two, on the twenty eighth, and they won Game Two on the twenty ninth of September, six to five in twelve innings. October twenty first, October twenty first, player the Players Association approves two All Star games in nineteen sixty and to be played in Kansas City and New York. We'll get to the World, World Series in a minute. The season stats are as follows. Harvey Kuhn of Detroit and Rocky Colavito of Cleveland finished tied at top of the American League with a three fifty three batting average. Harmon Killerbrew of Washington ends up with 42 home runs to lead the American League. 
and Jackie Jansen of Boston, the 112 RBIs, leading the American League. Pitching, early win of Chicago, the Go-Go Sox. I don't know why they're named the Go-Go Sox, but he ended up picking, tw picking up 22 wins, leading the, na leading the majors. Hoyt Wilhelm of Baltimore, 2.19 ERA, led the majors. And Jim Bunning of Detroit, 201 strikeouts, led the American League. National League, Hank Aaron of Milwaukee, 356 average, led the majors. Eddie Matthews of Milwaukee, 46 home runs, led the majors. Ernie Banks of Chicago and Lou Burdett of Milwaukee, each had 143 runs batted in, tied for first in the majors. Sam Jones of San Francisco and Warren Spawn of Milwaukee each had 21 wins, led the National League. I think that's season 10 that Warren Spawn had 20 wins or more. Sam Jones of San Francisco also had a 2.83 ERA, led the National League. And Don Drysdale of the Dodgers, 242 strikeouts, led the majors. Standings, American League, Chicago, the that go go, the Chicago White go, the Chicago go go White Sox. I don't know why they're named. Ninety four wins, sixty losses. Cleveland finished second with it had eighty nine and sixty five, five back. Yankees finished seventy nine and seventy five, fifteen back. Detroit goes seventy six and seventy eight. 18 back. Boston goes 75 and 79. 19 back. Baltimore, 74 and 80. 20 back. Kansas City went 66 and 88. 28 back. And Washington finished dead last with the 63 and 91 record. 31 back. Nash League. Los Angeles, the Dodgers. 88 and 68 beat Milwaukee in the two game, best of three playoff. Milwaukee ended up with an 86 and 70 record, two back. And there's the there's the playoff right there. San Francisco was third at 83 and 71, four back. Pittsburgh goes 78 and 76, nine back. Cincinnati goes Cincinnati and Chicago. Both go 74 wins and 80 losses, 13 back. St. Louis goes 71 and 83, 16 by, back. And Philadelphia goes 64 and 90, 20, 23 back. So, we got the World Series between the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Chicago White Sox. LA, LA's home games are at the Memorial Coliseum. It's also the site of the opening and closing ceremonies of the 1932 and 1984 Summer Olympics. So, and Chicago's home games were at Comiskey Park. And game one on October 1st in Chicago, the White Sox win 11 to nothing. Game two on October 2nd in Chicago, the Dodgers even the series at one with a four to three win. Game three on October 4th in Los Angeles. Dodgers win three to one. Now they're up two games to one there. Game four on October fifth in Los Angeles. Dodgers five, White Sox four. Three games to one lead. Can they win the World Series at home? Game five on October sixth in LA. White Sox one, Dodgers nothing. So game six in Chicago on October eighth, and the Dodgers win nine to three. Given the Dodgers their first World Series in Los Angeles and their second overall. Four years after their first one, so how about that? And all three games in Los Angeles averaged more than 92,000 people per game. In fact, game five, in game five, 92,706 people attended. A World Series record that'll never be broken. Well, why, well, why is that? Well, 
30, 40,000 people in the stadium. Well, plus, it was the only World Series the Memorial Coliseum would see. Next time the Dodgers are in the World Series, they end up. The Dodgers are playing in the Memorial Coliseum. Dodgers Stadium is getting built and it opened in 1962. So there you go. And it was also the. The old Comiskey, the first Comiskey Park, so last World Series games until until the next time they're in there, they're in 2005, they moved into the current Comiskey Park, which is, I think named something else. I can't remember where it was. And yeah, that's it. So that's it for the night. 1959 season and that's it for the 1950s tomorrow we start the 1960s yeah Rexy says bye as does Brickley and until tomorrow stay tuned